Shalom. I hope and pray all is well with everyone. I hope and pray that the Most High have been keeping everyone, especially on the wake-up list every day last week, including today. I hope and pray each and every one is about that covenant life and I hope and pray that we all get wisdom to stop debating and arguing back and forth about when the Shabbat is. I'm just grateful that so many of you all love to keep the covenant of the Most High. You know, um, that's what we're going to be judged by at this, the end of what we call life. This is what we're going to be judged by, how we kept his covenant. So I do praise and thank him for allowing his mercy and his grace to be upon us. Today is uh, an interesting day on the East Coast, Southeast United States. It's interesting to me. Uh, we're in the midst of our present series, let's revisit enmity, enemies, enemy, enemies, and enemies, and this is part uh, 7A, 1 Samuel. I hope and pray that each and every one had a time, had time to get into uh, uh, 1 Samuel, because I'm going to tell you something, even though we don't read whole books in this Let's Revisit series. I know within the chapters that we do read, looking for our search words, we find a whole lot of interesting things that if we uh, was just doing here a little there, a little uh, looking for verses, we miss a whole lot. We miss how the uh, words are actually being used. We'll miss other things going on in the chapter that are key and pertinent to us keeping the covenant of the Most High. I hope and pray that we all do take time out and do what's pleasing in the Most High's eyesight and that's giving him glory, praise, and honor while we are obedient to his covenant. Can't say it enough. That covenant life is something uh, 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 very, very important for we as his children to actually be partakers of. And I feel, I don't feel, you know, uh, 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 real bad for those who take his covenant upon their lips and those who, when they take it upon his li their lips, those who don't actually apply the covenant or they pick and choose or deal with his covenant deceitfully. So I do know that the Most High will deal with them. But for now, we're going to keep fo our focus on ourselves in keeping of the Most High. High's covenant through the midst of it all. Let's pray. for today's psalm, today's prayer. Uh, believe me, uh, we've been in uh, 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 dealing with his, his word, his will, and his way. And I hope and pray that each and every one is taking time out to build their own prayer life with the Most High. Those within our prayer circle, I mean, like, we on Psalm, what, 57 today? I think I, I, I did one audible as led. You know, um, other than that, I've been making my personal prayers and strengthening my own personal prayer life. 
Heavenly Father, as we kneel before your throne of mercy and grace, we spread forth our hands unto you, praising you and thanking you, Father, for another day of being on the wake-up list. We praise you and thank you, Father, for uh, how you kept us on a wake-up list during the course of all last week. We praise you and thank you, Heavenly Father, for even keeping our vehicles, keeping us, keeping our family members, keeping our loved ones. We praise you and thank you, Father, for who you are, what your word does, and how your ruach moves in the midst of our lives. Forgive us of any sin, any iniquity, any transgression, any trespass, any unclean thought. Cleanse it from us right now, Father, as we invite you in the midst of this prayer, in the midst of this day. We ask, Father, that you would shema us from Psalm 57, be merciful unto us, O Elohim, be merciful unto us, for our soul trusts in thee. Come in the shadow of thy wings will we make our refuge until these calamities be overpassed. We will cry unto Elohim, El Elyon, unto Elohim that perform all things for us. He shall send from heaven and save us from the reproach of them that would swallow us up, Selah. Elohim shall send forth his mercy and his truth. Our souls is among lions, and we lie even among them that are set on fire. Even the sons of men whose teeth are spears and arrows in their tongue a sharp sword. Be thou exalted, O Elohim, above the heavens. Let thy glory be above all the earth. They have prepared a net for our steps. Our souls is bowed down. They have digged the pit before us into the midst where they are falling themselves. Selah. Our hearts is fixed, O Elohim. Our hearts is fixed. We will sing and give praise. Awake up our glory. Awake sultry and hawk. We ourselves will awake early. We will praise thee, O Yah, among the people. We will sing unto thee among the nations. For thy mercy is great unto the heavens and thy truth unto the clouds. Be thou exalted, O Elohim, above the heavens. Let thy glory be above all the earth. We ask, Father, that you will remember we your children. Save us this day. Even Barak us to be a Barak unto the widow of widows, fatherless, the oppressed and poor. Allow me to decrease and allow your ruach to increase in the midst of our lives. Have thine own way in the midst of our lives, Father. You're welcome here. You're welcome in me. You're welcome in the midst of this exhortation. Open up our eyes, the eyes of our understanding, even the eyes of our heart, so that we can see and hear and apply what your word is showing to us, Father, so that we can bring forth fruit unto thy glory. We ask that you will have thine own way. Barack those who would join us, those who are to join us. We ask that you would continue to get the glory, the praise, and the honor. We ask this in Yeshua HaMashiach. Name we pray. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but believe me, Prayer is a key, critical uh, 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 part of my life. I don't understand how some can call themselves Israel, but don't have a communication line with the Creator. I don't get that part. But anyhow, we're going to keep it moving. Uh, we have eight stops today, and we are in the book of 1 Samuel. Uh, our first two stops is 1 Samuel 1 for background purposes only and also 1 Samuel 2. I will read them in their entirety and then we will go back and uh, harp on a few points. Some of you all may wonder, well, if we only looking for uh, uh, the search words enmity, enemies, enemy, enemies, enemies, and enemies, why is he reading the whole chapter? Well, faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of the most high. And what we're trying to do is get a whole sense of how the words are being used so that we can bring forth the lost art of rightly dividing the word of truth. There are many things happening Many people under attack spiritually. Many people are falling away spiritually. 
Many people will be mad at you because you keep their covenant, the Most High's covenant, and they don't seem to have time to keep his covenant. That ain't your problem. All you can do is put, keep your hands up, praising and thanking the Most High, keep it moving forward in the direction of the Most High. Again, we're in uh, 1 Samuel chapters 1 and 2. Very interesting note in my scripture book. It says the first book of Samuel, otherwise called the first book of the kings. I'm going to flip this around and show you. Up here, it says the first book of Samuel, otherwise known as the first book of the kings. Very important to remember that because by the time you get the one kings, they'll call it commonly known as the third book of the kings. And then uh, second kings would be the fourth kings. All right. We're going to read 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 1 all the way through chapter 2 verse 36. Now there was a certain man of Ramatham Zophim of Mount Ephraim, and his name was Elkanah, the son of Yeroham, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zuth, and Ephrathite. And he had two Eshes, the name of the one was Hannah, and the name of the other Penina. And Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. And this man went up out of his city yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto Yah El of hosts in Shiloh, and the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, the Cohens of Yah, were there. And when the time was that Elkanah offered, he gave to Penina his Isha and to all her sons and her daughters portions, but unto Hannah he gave a worthy portion, for he loved Hannah, but the Most High had shut up her womb. And her adversary also provoked her sore for to make her fret because Yah had shut up her womb. And as he did so year by year, when she went up to the house of Yah, so she provoked her, therefore she wept and did not eat. Then said Elkanah her issue to her, Hannah, why weepest thou, and why eatest thou not? And why is thy heart grieved? Am not I better to thee than ten sons? So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh and after they had drunk. Now Eli the Cohen sat upon a seat by a post of the temple of Yah. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto Yah and wept sore. And she vowed a vow and said, O Yah, El of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of thy handmaid, and remember me, and not forget thy handmaid, but will give unto thy handmaid a man-child, then I will give him unto you all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. And it came to pass as she continued praying before Yah, that Eli marked them up. Now Hannah, she spake in her heart, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli thought she had been drunken. <laughs> and Eli said unto her, How long will you be drunken? Put away thy wine from thee. <laughs> and Hannah answered and said, No, my master, I am a woman of a sorrowful ruach. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out my soul before Yah. Count not thy handmaid for a daughter of Bilal, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken hitherto. Then Eli answered and said, Go in Shalom, and the El of Israel grant thee thy petition that you had asked of him. And she said, Let thy handmaid find grace in thy sight. So the woman went her way and did eat, and her countenance was no more sad. And they arose up in the morning early and worshipped before Yah and returned and came to their house to Ramah. And Elkanah knew Hannah his Isha and Yah remembered her. 
Wherefore it came to pass when the time was come about after Hannah had conceived that she bare a son and called his name Samuel, saying, Because I have asked him of Yah. And the man Elkanah and all his house went up to offer unto Yah the yearly sacrifice and his vow. But Hannah went not up, for she said unto her, Ishi, I will not go up until the child be weaned, and then I will bring him, that he may appear before Yah, and there abide forever. And Elkanah her Ishi said unto her, Do what seems thee good, tarry until you have weaned him, only Yah established his word. So the woman abode and gave her son suck until she weaned him. And when she had weaned him, she took him up with her with three bullocks and one ephah of flour and a bottle of wine and brought him unto the house of Yah in Shiloh. And the child was young. And they slew a bullock and brought the child to Eli. And she said, Well, my master, as thy soul lives, my master, I am the woman that stood by thee here praying unto Yah. For this child I prayed, and Yah have given me my petition, which I asked of him. Therefore also I have lent him to Yah. As long as he lives, he shall be lent to Yah, and he worship Yah there. Hallelujah. Chapter 2, verse 1. And Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoices in Yah. My horn is exalted in Yah. My mouth is enlarged over my enemies because I rejoice in thy salvation. There is none holy as Yah, for there is none beside thee, neither is there any rock like our El. Talk no more so exceeding proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth, for Yah is an El of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. The bowls of the mighty men are broken, and they that stumbled are girded with strength. They that will full have tired out themselves for bread, and they that were hungry cease, so that the barren have borne seven, and she that have many children is wax feeble. Yah kills and makes alive, he brings down to the grave and bring up. Yah makes poor and makes rich, he brings low and he lifts high up. He raises up the poor out of the dust and lifts up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory for the pillars of the earth are Yah's and he shall set the world upon them. He will keep the feet of his saints and the wicked shall be silent in darkness for by strength shall no man prevail. The adversaries of Yah shall be broken to pieces out of heaven shall he thunder upon them. Yah shall judge the ends of the earth, and he shall give strength unto his king, and exalt the horn of the anointed. And Elkanah went to Ramah to his house, and the child did minister unto Yah before Eliah the Cohen. Now the sons of Eli were sons of Belah. They knew not Yah. And the Cohen's custom with the people was when that any man offered sacrifice, the Cohen's Ebed came while the flesh was in seething with a flesh hook of three teeth in his hand, and he struck it into the pan or kettle or cauldron or pot. All that the fresh hook brought up, the Cohen took for himself. So they did in Shiloh unto all the Israelites that came there. Also, before they burnt the fat, the Cohen's eBay came and said to the man that sacrificed, Give flesh the roast for the Cohen, for he will not have sodden flesh of thee, but raw. And if any man said unto him, Let him let them not fail to burn the fat presently, and then take as much as thy soul desires, then he will answer him, Nay. But you shall give it me now, and if not, I will take it by force. Wherefore the sin of the young men was very great before Yah, for men abhorred the offering of Yah. But Samuel ministered before Yah, being a child girded with a linen ephah. 
Moreover, his armor made him a little coat and brought it to him from year to year when she came up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. And Eli brought Elkanah and his Isha and said, Yah, give thee seed of this woman for the loan which she has lent to Yah. And they went unto their own home. And Yah visited Hannah so that she conceived and bare three sons and two daughters. And the child Samuel grew before Yah. Now Eli, Eli was very old and heard all that his sons did unto all Israel and how they lay with the women that assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And he said unto them, Why do you such things for I shall your evil dealings by all this people? Nay, my sons, for it is no good report that I shall Ye make the Ye make Yah's people to transgress. If one man sins against another, the judge shall judge him. But if a man sin against Yah, who shall entreat for him? Notwithstanding, they hearken not unto the voice of their Abba, because Yah would slay them. And the child Samuel grew on and was in favor both with Yah and also with men. And there came a man, man of Elohim unto Eli and said unto him, Thus says Yah, did I plainly appear unto the house of the Abba? when they were in Mitzrayim in Pharaoh's house. And did I choose him out of all the tribes of Israel to be my Cohen to offer upon my altar to burn incense to where he fought before me? And did I give unto the house of thy Abba all the offerings made by fire of the children of Israel? Wherefore kick ye at my sacrifice and at my offering, which I have commended in my habitation, and honor thy sons above me to make yourselves fat with the chiefest of all the offerings of Israel, my people. Wherefore, Yah Elohim of Israel says, I said indeed that thy house and the house of thy Abba should walk before me forever. But now Yah saith, be it far from me, for them that honor me I will honor, and they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Behold, the days come that I will cut off thy arm in the arm of thy Abba's house, that there shall not be an old man in thy house, and you shall see an enemy in my habitation and all the wealth which Elohim shall give Israel, and there shall not be an old man in thy house forever. And the man of thine whom I shall not cut off from my Altar shall be to consume thy eyes and to grieve thy heart, and all the increase of thy house shall die in the flower of their age. And this shall be a sign unto thee that shall come upon thy two sons, on Hophni and Phineas, and one day they shall die, both of them. And I will raise me up a faithful coin that shall do according to that which is in my heart and in my mind, and I will build him a sure house, and he shall walk before my anointed forever. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left in thy house shall come and crouch to him for a piece of silver and a morsel of bread, and shall say, Put me, I pray thee, into one of the Cohen's offices, that I may eat a piece of bread. Hallelujah. <clears throat> I don't know about you, but in chapter two, at towards the end, it seemed like the times was getting real, real slim and none in Israel. All right? In chapter one, we had background purposes, all right? And we read here, how, you know, Hannah prayed, uh, her husband Elkanah had uh, two Ishas, uh, Hannah and Penina. Penina had children, but Hannah had none, all right? And as the custom was, at that time, everybody had to go to Jerusalem for, I mean, well, at this time, Shiloh for High Holy Days, okay? And then it was switched to Jerusalem. 
Uh, the priest at the time, the Cohen at the time, was Eli. And he had two sons, Hophni and Phineas. All right? Again, I must warn everyone, be careful how you pick names out of the scripture book and give them to your children or yourself. All right? Now, Phineas, it was a different Phineas up in the times of Moshe and Haram. All right? He was a good one. But this Phineas wasn't a good one. It's just like uh, uh, little Micah from Moore Chef and also Micah in the back of the book. Very important that you understand what you're saying when you are choosing a name to invoke upon yourself. A lot of these names carry spirits, ruachs, and you don't want to be on the wrong side of the most high. All right? Uh, Eli thought Hannah was drunken, you know, because she prayed and, and within her heart and only her lips moved, no sound in her voice. And he thought she was drunken. And she in verse 16 said, you know, count not thy handmaid for a daughter of Belial. All right? Uh, there are children of Belial. That is a whole term in itself. Uh, as you read on or you look in your lexicon, you can look up the word children of Belial. They actually children of the devil. All right? <laughs> Very important to be mindful of this. Uh, Hannah prayed a prayer and uh, Eli uh, heard a prayer and just said, you know, go in Shalom and Elohim of Israel, grant thee thy petition. So for any uh, daughter of Zion, biologically born woman, married to a biologically born man, trying to have Children, I'm going to say what uh, Eli said, go in shalom and the Elohim of Israel grant thee thy petition. All right? It's very important that, you know, we as a people stay within the confines of scripture. All right? Now, we got in the uh, 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 1 is our first search word. Hannah prayed and said, my heart rejoice in Yah, my horn is exalted in Yah. My mouth is enlarged over my enemies because I rejoice in thy salvation. The word enemies here was entry number 341, scriptural Hebrew word oyeb, O-Y-E-B, part of hating, adversary, foe is what it means, all right? Again, she's giving glory, praise, and honor to the Most High in chapter 2, verse 1, verse 2, all the way down. All right? Uh, she was given, actually, a, 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 a testimony about how the Most High can do things. Uh, let's see. Verse 4, the bow of the mighty men are broken, and they that stumble are girded with strength. They that were full have hired out themselves for bread, and they that were hungry see, so that the barren have borne seven, and she that have many children is waxed feeble. Six says, Yah kills and makes alive, he brings down to the grave and brings up. Yah makes poor and makes rich, he brings low and lifts up. He raises up the poor out of the dust, lifts up the beggar from the dunghill, to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory for the pillars of the earth for yards and he have set the world upon them. He will keep the feet of his saints and the wicked shall be silent in darkness for by strength shall no man prevail. The adversaries of Yah shall be broken to pieces out of heaven shall he thunder upon them. Yah shall judge the ends of the earth and he shall give strength unto his king and exalt the horn of the of his anointing, all right? People, give glory, praise, and honor unto the Most High. These words of Hannah, 
that she's speaking here, you can find a lot of these words in the Psalms, okay? Be very familiar uh, with your uh, 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 scripture book, okay? Uh, let's see, verse 12. Interesting fact here. Now the sons of Eli were sons of Bilal. They knew not Yah. They are sons of Eli now sitting in the midst of leadership. Okay? Doing wicked things. Commanding and demanding that money tithe. Commanding and demanding X, Y, Z. It's not a uh, 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 good if you know you sitting up under uh, 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 sons of Bilal, you know, uh, 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 Eli's sons, Hophni and Phineas. if you know you sitting up under them in leadership, I suggest you run. Anybody who is not a, in agreement on how you take the whole volume of the book, run from them. Don't walk. Run. Run. Get away from them. Because you are not equally yoked. If you say you believe in the Messiah and the work done on the tree for remission of sins and uh, somebody's trying to get with you, how about they Torah only with no Messiah? Run. That's one of them sons of Eli, sons of Belial. Eli was a lawful man, but his sons was wicked as hell. All right? As we go on and read down in verse 22 here, it says, Eli was very old and heard all that his sons did unto all Israel, how they lay with the women that assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the kahal, the congregation. And he said unto them, why do you such things? For I hear of your evil dealings by all this people. Run. A man of Elohim will not have you sin before the Most High when you yourself are a covenant keeper. Anybody hollering about sex is marriage? Run! <laughs> that was only one incident. People, I adjure you, stay with the scripture book. Alright? Listen to uh, uh, 23 and 24 in chapter 2. He said unto them, Why do ye such things? For I shall mob your evil dealings by all this people. Nay, my sons, for it is no good report that I shema, ye make Yah's people to transgress. So if you're dealing with some kind of leadership that's making you transgress, run. Get away from them. The only thing that can come ever come out of that is a bunch of death, and then after that, a bunch of stripes. Be mindful of who you're dealing with. Be mindful, all right? A true man of Elohim will not have you uh, 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 committing sin in the eyes of the Most High. Listen, as we read on, you know, uh, 25 said, if one man sin against another, the judge shall judge him. But if a man sin against the Most High, who shall entreat for him? Notwithstanding, they hearken not unto the voice of their Abba, because Yah would slay them. The child Samuel grew on and was in favor both with Yah and also with men. All right? You want to be steadfast like Samuel. All right? You want to be steadfast. Um, down in verse 30, it says, um, Wherefore Yah El of Israel said, I said indeed that thy house and the house of thy Abba will walk before me forever. But now Yah says, Be it far from me for them that honor me, I will 
honor and they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. All right? So you might hear some people say, Father, be an enemy to my enemies and an adversary to my adversary. Yeah. Sometimes we as a people got to understand that either you're going to keep the covenant or you're not. It's that plain. It ain't nothing deep and sagacious and spooky and all that. No. Either you're going to do the covenant or you're not. And a lot of churchianity from their own mouths condemn their own souls. We ain't not in the law. We ain't not in the law. No covenant. No nothing. Just willy nilly. Let's go. All right, y'all. We're going to make this up as we go. A lot of them been in a, a, a 15, 20 year freestyle in their belief system. Our search word is in 32. You shall see an enemy in my habitation and all the wealth which El shall give Israel and there shall not be an old man in thy house forever. This word enemy, entry number 6862. Interesting word. Scriptural Hebrew word Zar. T-S-A-R and it means a tight place, a narrow place, trouble, adversary, afflicted, anguish, clothes, Distress, flint, foe, narrow, small, sorrow, straight, tribulation, trouble. Listen, never deal with people that are have you in a tight place. If they have you in a tight place once, don't deal with them anymore. All right? Because you were not uh, designed to be in a tight place. All right? Uh, let's see. Oh, 36. Wait a minute, 35. No, I'm going to go back to 34. This shall be a sign under thee and shall come upon thy two sons, on Hophni and Phinehas, and one day they shall die, both of them. And I will raise me up a faithful Cohen. That shall do according to that which is in my heart and in my mind. And I will build him a sure house. And he shall walk before my anointed forever. Alright. So some of you all think you stuck with. You know wicked leadership. You're not. The most High will remove them. You just get out the way. You know, and, and keep your mouth quiet as the Most High do what he does. All right? 36 says, It shall come to pass that everyone that is left in thy house shall come and crouch to him for a piece of silver and a morsel of bread and shall say, Put me, I pray thee, into one of the Cohen's offices that I may eat a piece of bread. Listen, it's going to come a time, all of them sitting around profaning the covenant, so-called Israel, profaning the covenant, eating well, living well right now. It's going to come a time real soon when the Most High New World Order start to take even more form and shape upon this physical plane of existence. It's very, very important that we remain obedient to the Most High Word, Will, and Way. Chapter 3 was interesting. No search words in it. But I'm bringing it up because something that says something. Uh, uh, it says something very interesting that Samuel, you know, laid in the Most High, called them three times. And he went to Eli three times as saying that, uh, uh, you call me, you call me. No, 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 I ain't call you. Next time you hear that voice, you tell the most high to speak for his ebed is listening. All right? Now, verse 19 is chapter, and, and verse 19 in chapter 3 is very important. Listen to what it says. 
And Samuel grew, and Yah was with him, and did let none of his words fall to the ground. We can't let the words of the Most High fall to the ground. All of them you shall not up there in, in Moses. And uh, uh, what is that? Exodus 20 and Leviticus 26. You can't let being a child of the Most High, you cannot let his words fall to the ground. All right? Our next stop is in... Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 4. And we'll be reading verses 1 through 22. And the word of Samuel came to all Israel. Now Israel went out against the Philistines to battle and pitched beside Ebenezer and the Philistines pitched in Aphek. And the Philistines put themselves in array against Israel and when they joined battle, Israel was smitten before the Philistines, and they slew of the army in the field about 4,000 men. And when the people were coming to the camp, the Zakana Israel said, Wherefore have Yah smitten us today before the Philistines? Let us fetch the Ark of the Covenant of Yah out of Shiloh unto us, that when it comes among us, it may save us out of the hand of our enemies. So the people sent to Shiloh that they might bring from thence the Ark of the Covenant of Yael of Hosts, which dwells between the cherubims, and the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were there with the Ark of the Covenant of Elohim. And when the Ark of the Covenant of Yah came into the camp, all Israel shouted with a great shout, so that the earth rang again. And when the Philistines heard the noise of the shout, they said, What meaneth the noise of the great shout in the camp of the Ibri? And they understood that the ark of Yah was coming to the camp. And the Philistines were afraid, for they said, Elohim is coming to the camp. And they said, Woe well, unto us, for there have not been such a thing hitherto for. Woe well, unto us who shall deliver us out of the hand of these mighty Elohim, these are the Elohim that smote the Mitzurians with all the plagues in the wilderness. Be strong and quit yourselves like men, O ye Philistines, that ye be not Ebeds unto the Ibri as they have been to you. Quit yourselves like men and fight. And the Philistines fought, and Israel was smitten, and they fled every man into his tent, and there was a very great slaughter for their fellow Israel, 30,000 footmen. And the ark of Elohim was taken, and the two sons of Eli, Hophni, and Phinehas were slain. And there ran a man of ben Ami out of the army and came to Shiloh the same day with his clothes rent and with earth upon his head. And when he came, lo, Eli sat upon the seat by the wayside watching, for his heart trembled for the ark of Elohim. And when the man came into the city and told it, all the city cried out. And when Eli heard the noise of the cry, he said, what means the noise of this turmoil? And the man came in hastily and told Eli. Now Eli was 90 and 8 years old, and his eyes were dim that he could not see. And the man said unto Eli, I am he that came out of the army, and I fled today out of the army. And he said, What is there done, my son? And the messenger answered and said, Israel's fled from before the Philistines, and there have been also a great slaughter among the people. And thy two sons also, Hophni and Phinehas, are dead, and the ark of Elohim is dead. Taken. And it came to pass when he made mention of the ark of Elohim that Eli fell from off the seat backward by the side of the gate and his neck break and he died for he was an old man and heavy and he had judged Israel 40 years. And his daughter-in-law Phineas Isha was with child near to be delivered. 
And when she heard the tidings that the Ark of Elohim was taken and that her Abba-in-law and her husband were dead, she bowed herself and travailed for her pains came upon her. And about the time of her death, the women that stood by her said unto her, Fear not, for you have borne a son. But she answered not, neither did she regard it. And she named the child Ichabod, saying, The glory is departed from Israel, because the ark of Elohim was taken, and because of her Abba-in-law and her issue. And she said, The glory is departed from Israel, for the ark of Elohim is taken. Hallelujah. Boy, oh boy. Man, did it rain. Hophni and Phineas dead. When the father found out, he died. The daughter-in-law found out she died, but still gave birth and named the baby Ichabod. See where they get the names from that you see in Hollywood? Ichabod. Remember Ichabod Crane, the headless horseman? Yeah. There's more the scripture book in Hollywood than, than actually people live in the scripture book. Our search word is in um, uh, verse 3. When the people were coming to the camp, the Zekane of Israel said, Wherefore have Yah smitten us today before the hip Philistines? Let us fetch the Ark of the Covenant of Yah out of Shiloh unto us, that when it comes among us, it may save us out of the hand of our enemies. This word enemies here. Entry number 341. Oh yeah. Part of hating adversary foe. Listen, people. Make sure you're on the right side of the most high. You do not want to be on the wrong side of the most high. Alright? All of them ended up dying. It was 30,000 footmen in verse 10. And then it was uh, in verse 2. They slew of the army in the field about 4,000 men. 34,000 people died. 4,000 before the ark got there. And then another 30,000 after the ark got there. And the Philistines ended up with the ark. You could have all the commandments in the world. But if you ain't got obedience to them. They mean nothing. And if you ain't working them in love. They sure enough don't mean nothing. It's very, very important. But look, it says in verse 18, Eli judged Israel 40 years. We coming through the succession still. Remember in the book of Judges, how after Jehoshua died, then it was Caleb, now after Caleb, Afnil, after Afnil, it was some other ones and all of that. Now, here it is. Eli was up on the mic in 1 Samuel first four chapters. All right? And he judged 40 years. Very important that you understand what's going on. Chapter 5 showed us what happened when the Philistines took the Ark of the Covenant of the Most High and put it in the house of their pagan deity. The pagan deity ended up on the floor broke. All right? <laughs> and they were trying to get rid of that thing. Let's get this cursed thing out of here before we, it kills us all. Shoot. They, they put it on a cart and sent it in the woods. <laughs> Our next drop is 1 Samuel chapter 12. Who on the mic now? Uh, let's see. Oh, it's Shaul on the mic now. All right? As far as leadership. Verse uh, chapter 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 1. Samuel said unto all Israel, Behold, I have hearkened to your voice, and all that ye said unto me, and have made a king over you. Now behold, the king walked before you, 
and I am old and gray-headed, and behold, my sons are with you, and I have walked before you from my childhood unto this day. Behold, here I am, witness against me before Yah, before his anointed, whose ox have I taken, or whose ass have I taken, or whom have I defrauded, whom have I oppressed, or of whose hand have I received any bribe to blind my eyes therewith, and I will restore it you. And they said, Thou hast not defrauded us, nor oppressed us, neither have you taken aught of any man's hand. And he said unto them, Yah's witness against you and his anointed is witness this day that ye have not found aught in my hand. And they answered his witness. And Samuel said unto the people, There is Yah that advanced Moshe and Haran, and they brought your Abbas up out of the land of Mitzrayim. Now therefore stand still, that I may reason with you before Yah out of all lawful acts of Yah, which he did to you and to your Abbas. When Yaku was coming to Mitzrayim and your Abbas cried unto Yah, then Yah sent Moshe and Haran, which brought forth your Abbas out of Mitzrayim and made them dwell in this place. And when they forgot Yah their El, he sold them into the hand of Sisera, captain of the hosts of Hazar, and into the hand of the Philistines, and into the hand of the king of Moab, and they fought against them. And they cried unto Yah and said, We have sinned because we have forsaken Yah and have served Baalim and Ashtaroth, but now deliver us out of the hand of our enemies, and we will serve thee. And Yah sent Yerubabel and Badan and Japheth and Samuel and delivered you out of the hand of your enemies on every side, and ye dwelled safe. And when ye saw that Nahash, the king of the children of Ammon, came against you, ye said unto me, Nay, but a king shall reign over us when Yahyael was your king. Now therefore, behold the king whom you have chosen and whom ye have desired, and behold, Yah have set a king over you. If ye will fear Yah and serve him and obey his voice and not rebel against the commandment of Yah, then shall both ye and also the king that reign over you continue following Yah Yael. But if ye will not obey the voice of Yah but rebel against the commandment of Yah, then shall the hand of Yah be against you as it was against your Abbas. Now therefore stand and see this great thing which Yah will do before your eyes. Is it not we harvest today? I will call unto Yah, he shall send thunder and rain, that ye may perceive and see that your wickedness is great, which ye have done in the sight of Yah in asking you a king. So Samuel called unto Yah, and Yah sent thunder and rain that day, and all the people greatly feared Yah and Samuel. And all the people said unto Samuel, Pray for thy ebeds unto Yah thy El, that we die not, for we have added unto our sins this evil to ask us a king. And Samuel said unto the people, Fear not, ye have done all this wickedness, yet turn not aside from following Yah. But serve Yah before your heart, and turn ye not aside, for then should ye go after vain things which cannot profit nor deliver, for they are vain. For the people will not forsake, excuse me, for Yah will not forsake his people for his great namesake, because it hath pleased Yah to make you his people. Moreover, as for me, Elohim forbid that I should sin against Yah in ceasing to pray for you, but I will teach you the good and the right way. Only fear Yah and serve him in truth with all your heart, for consider how great things he have done for you. But if ye shall still do wickedly, ye shall be consumed, both you and your king. Hallelujah. Dad, they wanted to be like other nations. Give me a king. Give me a king. Give me a king. Give me a king. 
Verse 10 is our first search word. They cried unto Yah and said, We have sinned because we have forsaken Yah, and we serve Balaam and Ashtaroth, but now deliver us out of the hand of our enemies, and we will serve thee. This word enemies in this verse is entry number 341, oh yet part of hating, adversary, fuck. Listen, this verse right here shows Israel can't keep hollering about LRDGD and all them shenanigans and keep hollering about their children on the most high. You can't keep you, you can't keep going back and forth. You gotta set set up an opinion and let that be that. Man, they served Baleen, that was L R D and Ashtaroth, all right? Verse 11 says, And Yah sent Yerubabel and Badan and Yafith and Samuel and delivered you out of the hand of your enemies on every side, and ye dwelt safe. All right? Up in verse 9, it talked about uh, 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 Hazar and Sisera. And don't forget when we was in the book of Judges, it was a couple more captivities that people was taking away and all of that, all right? Our search word in verse 11 is entry number 341, all right? Scriptural Hebrew word, oh yeah, O-Y-E-B, and it means part of hating, adversary, foe. Very important, people, very important. As you read this, just understand like verse 3. How many of you all dealing with leadership that can say verse 3? Behold, here I am, witness against me before Yah and before his anointed. Alright? Before Yah and before his anointed. Okay? Whose ox have I taken? Whose ass have I taken? Or whom have I defrauded? Whom have I oppressed? Or of whose hand have I received any bribe to blind my eyes therewith, and I will restore you. And they said, you have not defrauded us, nor oppressed us, neither have you taken aught of any man's hand. And listen to five. And he said unto them, Yah's witness against you and against, and his anointed is witness this day, that ye have not found aught in my hand, and they answered, he is witness. How many of you all sitting up under leadership like that? Handling the word, uh, uh, not handling the word deceitfully. Some of you all are handling the word deceitfully in leadership because you want the favor of the monetary tie. Or you even still lying about it. Nowhere did in the scripture book, from the front of the scripture book to the back of the scripture book, nowhere did the tithe change. Just because people stop growing food and raising animals, that don't mean the tithe change. If the word is saying today and will be tomorrow forevermore, then where does doctrine come from? Told you some of you all are living on a 15, 20 year, uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, 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 a belief system freestyle. Go back to the book of Judges. Everyone did what was right in their own eyes. Some of you all are paying people uh, 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 money tithes. Don't forget the tithing. Uh, 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 that whole, that whole system was set up under Torah. So if we ain't under the law, we ain't under the law, we ain't under the law. Why are you collecting tithes? And then for those who uh, 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 believe in the law, still, why are you taking money instead of free will offering? Only beggars beg for alms. What work you doing? Me and my people for years came out of pocket when most of the people that came to us for money 
was in places of worship. Paying money tithes, but scared to ask them. Man, look. Y'all got this thing twisted. Untwisted. Because uh, uh, when you get things twisted, that means iniquity. To twist things up. Yeah. Do a word study on, on Greek and Hebrew on the word sin, iniquity, transgression, and trespass. And for those who want to do a scriptural word study, always remember, sin is the transgression of the law. So you throw away the, the, the law, we ain't none of the law, we ain't none of the law. So that means y'all ain't got no sin? Uh-oh. Now some of y'all are sitting there, oh, whom he has made free is free indeed. Look, you better be obedient to that law. Stop with the one verse doctrine because you ain't going to move me. Not with no one verse doctrine. No. Uh-uh. Let's keep it moving. Our next stop today is uh, 1 Samuel chapter 14. It came to pass upon the day that Yohanan the son of Shaul said unto the young man that bears armor, come and let us go over to the Philistines garrison that is on the other side, but he told not his Abba. And Shaul tarried in the uttermost part of Gibeah under a pomegranate tree, which is in Migron, and the people that were with him were about 600 men. And Ahiah, the son of Atu, Ichabod's Ak, the son of Phinehas, the son of Eli, Yas, Cohen, and Shiloh wearing the ephod, and the people knew not that Yohanan was gone. And between the passages by which Yohanan sought to go over unto the Philistines' garrison, there was a sharp rock on the one side and a sharp rock on the other side, and the name of the one was Bozes, and the name of the other, Sine. The forefront of the one was situate northward over against Michmash and the other southward over against Gibeah. And Yohanan said to the young man that bears armor, come and let us go over unto the garrison of these uncircumcised. It may be that Yah will work for us for there is no restraint to Yah to save by many or by few. And his armor bearer said unto him, do all that is in thy heart, turn thee, behold, I am with thee according to thy heart. Then say, Yohanan, behold, we will pass over unto these men, and we will discover ourselves unto them. If they say thus unto us, tarry until we come to you, then we will stand in our place and will not go up unto them. But if they say thus, come up unto us, then we will go up, for Yah have delivered them into our hand, and this shall be a sign unto us. And both of them discovered themselves into the garrison of the Philistines. And the Philistines said, Behold, the Ibri come forth out of the holes where they had hid themselves. And the men of the garrison answered Yohanan and his armor bearer and said, Come up to us and we will show you a thing. <laughs> And Yohannes said unto his armor bearer, Come up after me, for Yah have delivered them into the hand of Israel. And Yohannes climbed up upon his hands and upon his feet, and his armor bearer after him, and they fell before Yohannes, and his armor bearer slew after him. And that first slaughter which Yohannes and his armor bearer made was about 20 men within as it were a half acre of land which a yoke of oxen might plow. And there was trembling in the hosts in the field and among all the people. The garrison and the spoilers, they all trembled and the earth quaked. So it was a very great trembling. And the watchmen of Sha'u and Gibeah of ben Amin looked and behold, the multitude melted away and they went on beating down one another. Then said Shaul unto the people that were with him, Number now and see who is going from us. 
And when they had numbered, behold, Yohanan and his armor bearer were not there. And Shaul said unto Ahiah, Bring here the Ark of Elohim, for the Ark of Elohim was at that time with the children of Israel. And it came to pass while Shaul talked unto the Kohen that the noise that was in the host of the Philistines went on in. Increase and Shaul said unto the Cohen, Withdraw thy hand. And Shaul and all the people that were with him assembled themselves, and they came to the battle. And behold, every man's sword was against its fellow, and there was a very great discomfiture. Moreover, the Ibri that were with the Philistines before that time went, which went up with them into the camp from the country round about. Even they also turned to be with the Israelites that were with Shaul and Yohanan. Likewise, all the men of Israel which had hid themselves in Mount Ephraim, when they heard that the Philistines fled, even they also followed hard after them in the battle. So Yah saved Israel that day, and the battle passed over unto Beth Avon. And the men of Israel were distressed that day, for Shaul had adjured the people, saying, Cursed be the man that eats any food until evening, that I may be avenged on my enemies, so none of the people tasted any food. And all they of the land came to a wood, and there was honey upon the ground. And when the people were coming to the wood, behold, the honey dropped, but no man put his hand to his mouth, for the people feared the oath. But Yohanan heard not when his Abba charged the people with the oath, wherefore he put the end of the rod that was in his hand and dipped it in the honeycomb and put his hand to his mouth and his eyes were enlightened. They answered one of the people and said, Thy Abba straightly charged the people with an oath saying, Cursed be the man that eat any food this day. And the people were faint. Then said, Your honor, my Abba have troubled the land. See, I pray you how my eyes have been enlightened because I tasted a little of this honey. How much more if happily the people had eaten freely today of the spoil of their enemies, which they found for had there not been now a much greater slaughter among the Philistines. And they smoked the Philistines that day from Mishmash to Ayalon, and the people were very faint. And the people flew upon the spoil and took sheep and oxen and calves and slew them on the ground, and the people did eat them with the blood. Then they told Shaul, saying, Behold, the people sin against Yah in that they eat with the blood, and he said, ye have transgressed. Roll a great stone <coughs> unto me this day. And Shaul said, disperse yourselves among the people and say unto them, bring me here every man his ox and every man his sheep and slay them here and eat and sin not against Yah and eating with the blood. And all the people brought every man his ox with him that night and slew them there. And Shaul built an altar unto Yah, the same was the first altar that he built unto Yah. And Shaul said, let us go down after the Philistines by night and spoil them unto the morning light and let us not leave a man of them. And they said, do whatsoever seemeth good unto thee. Then said the Cohen, let us draw near uh, here unto Elohim. And Shaul asked counsel of Elohim, shall I go down after the Philistines? Will you deliver them into the hand of Israel? But he answered him not that day. And Shaul said, draw ye near here, all the chief of the people, and know and see wherein this sin have been this day. For as Yah lives which saves Israel, though it be in Johan and my son, he shall surely die. But there was not a man among all the people that answered him. Then said he unto all Israel, Be ye on one side 
and I and Johan and my son will be on the other side. And the people said unto Shaul, do what seemed good unto thee. Therefore Shaul said unto Yah El of hosts, give a perfect lot, and Shaul and Johanan were taken, but the people escaped. And Shaul said, cast lots between me and Johanan my son, and Johanan was taken. And then Shaul said to Johanan, tell me what you have done. And Johanan told him and said, I did but taste a little honey with the end of the rod that was in my hand, and lo, I must die. And Shaul answered, Elohim, do so and more also, for you shall surely die, Yohanan. And the people said unto Shaul, shall Yohanan die, who have wrought this great salvation in Israel? Elohim forbid, as Yah live, there shall not one hair of his head fall to the ground, for he have wrought with Elohim this day. So the people rescued Yohanan that he died not. Then Shaul went up from following the Philistines, and the Philistines went to their own place. So Shaul took the kingdom over Israel and fought against all his enemies on every side, against Moab and against the children of Ammon, and against Edom and against the kings of Zaba, and against the Philistines, and whithersoever he turned himself, he vexed them. And he gathered their hosts and smoked the Amalekites and delivered Israel out of the hands of them that spoiled them. Now the sons of Shaul were Yohanan, Ishui, and Melchashua, and the names of his two daughters were these. The name of the first, Mirah, and the name of the younger, Mishal. And the name of Shaul's Isha was Ahinoam, the daughter of Asamaz. And the name of the captain of his host was Abner, the son of Ner, Shaul's uncle. And Kish was the Abba of Shaul, and Ner, the Abba of Abner, was the son of Abil. And there was sore war against the Philistines all the day of Shaul. And when Shaul saw any strong man or any valiant man, he took him unto him. Hallelujah. People, people, people. Man, don't think it's crazy because you and uh, your son going through, all right? Don't forget the back of the book where Messiah said he ain't come to say, bring peace on earth. He came to bring a sword, set an Abba against a son, a son against his Abba. And it's all based upon his word. Set a mother against a daughter, a daughter against a mother. Some of you are wondering why you and your family, your home is set apart. The Most High got it that way. Remember Abraham and Sarah? Abraham told uh, Lot to come. The Most High ain't tell him to take Lot. And Lot became more, more trouble than a little bit. It's very important that we be obedient to the word of the Most High. Let's look at our search words. 24 is our first search word. Uh, the men of Israel were distressed that day for Sha Shaul had adjured the people saying, Cursed be the man that eats any food until evening that I may be avenged of my enemies so none of the people tasted any food. Entry number 341, enemies. Uh, oh yeah, scriptural Hebrew word. Uh, part of hating adversary foe. Now, notice this, right? Not just that the uh, 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 Johanan and, and his armor bearer went up and went out. They went and did uh, what the two and uh, what was it? 300 did. <laughs> Them two went out and did that kind of work, all right, just to give you a visual, all right? But uh, Shaul, he way over somewhere else, barking uh, demandments, not commandments, demandments, all right? Uh, notice that uh, uh, Jonathan, in verse 27, when he tasted of the honeycomb, you know, uh, uh, his eyes was enlightened. Uh, 28 says, then answered one of the people and said, 
Thy Abba straightly charged the people with an oath, saying, Cursed be the man that eats any food this day, and the people were faint. Listen to the wisdom of the son, verse 29. Some of you fathers need to sometimes listen to your Isha and sometimes listen to them fully grown uh, 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 sons you got. Because listen to verse 29. Then Yohanan, then say Yohanan, my Abba have troubled the land. <laughs> See, I pray you how my eyes have been enlightened because I tasted a little of this honey. 30. How much more if happily the people had eaten freely today of the spoil of their enemies, which they found. For had there not been now a much greater slaughter among the Philistines. This word in verse 30, enemies, entry number 341. I right, scriptural Hebrew word, oyed, O-Y-E-B, part of hating, adversary, fuck. Man, oh man, people, people, people. 32 talked about how the people flew upon the spoil, took sheep, oxen, and calves, and slew them on the ground, and the people did eat them with the blood. Some of y'all wonder why uh, 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 I don't eat a, 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 I say I don't eat at people's houses. Nah. A lot of you all ain't soaking that meat, the blood out of the meat. You ain't supposed to eat the blood because the life is in the blood. Uh, let's see. Our next search word in this chapter was in um, verse 47. But let's stop by uh, uh, verse 35. Shaul built an altar unto Yah. The same was the first altar that he built unto Yah. All right. Uh... 37, he asked uh, counsel of Elohim, shall I go down after the Philistines? Will you deliver them into the hand of Israel? But he answered him not that day. And Shaul said, draw ye near here, all the chief of the people, and know and see wherein this sin hath been this day. And that's when, remember from the book of uh, uh, Joshua, chapter 7, when they called everybody, and called everybody by man, by tribe, and by family. And Jonathan was taken. You know, and the people, Shaul was really going to kill Jonathan. All right? So back in Judges with Yafith, when how he offered his daughter as a burnt sacrifice, believe me, people is not, uh, in them day and time, they, they wasn't caring uh, 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 about who, what affiliation you was, they want to know who's troubling Israel. Because Israel was spoiled to the point, well, favored to the point back then, whereas they um, would ask a thing, speak a thing, and it would be so. And that's how the leadership got back then. Some of us still speak and decree a thing in this day and time. And it, it'd be so. Might be a day or two or a week coming, but it be so. Man, oh man, oh man, the people saved uh, 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 Yohanan from being killed by his father, all right? Very important. The people saved him, you know? Some of you all are going through things in your personal life with your children, all right? I ain't telling you to kill your, kill your, your, your children, you know, but I'm going to tell you, <laughs> I heard some stuff last night that it was an alien that told Abraham to sacrifice his, his son. <laughs> Look, y'all got to be careful for all you all that listen to voices. Y'all got to be careful, all right? Uh, 47. Shaul took the kingdom over Israel and fought against all his enemies on every side against Moab. Find out who the Moabites are, all right? Against the children of Ammon, against Edom. Find out where Edom was at this time. It was on the western side of Israel. And against the kings of Zobah and against the Philistines and whithersoever he turned himself, he vexed them. 
This word enemies hid. In verse 47, entry number 341, scriptural Hebrew word oyed, and it means part of hating adversary fuck. Listen, people, we can't keep going on willy nilly. All right? Remember verse 29. If you don't remember nothing else about this chapter, the son said, Yohanan said, My Abba have troubled the land. Some of you all got parents that ain't nothing but trouble. Think they doing the work of the most high and all it is. And the whole time, uh, uh, they trying to uh, uh, actually put out the light. It's sad. It's a sad day when, when, when parents are jealous of children. Everybody holler about children obey your parents in the most high for this is right. Honor thy Abba and thy Amma so that thy days may be long upon the land. But don't nobody want to quote the next verse. Parents, don't provoke your children to wrath. Some of you children need to get away from them parents. Have your own house. Don't even, you know, worry about them. You got your own life now. Some of you all are over 20. That's the age of accountability. 20 and up. 19 and over went into the promised land. 20 and over, all except for Yehoshua, Caleb, and Moshe, 20 and over was dead. And Moshe went and seized Swollen Land and went into the mountain to die. <clears throat> People, be mindful. Be mindful. Because of the calling on your life, because how the Most High empowered you, you're going to have to stop listening to your parents after a while. Because what they saying ain't making sense. Everybody's supposed to be reading the same book. If we supposed to be reading and re uh, believing and reading the same book, how the hell we got all these different doctrines and all these different days of worship and all this paganism going on? Told you, some of, the, some of our parents are in a, 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 a 20, 30, 40 year freestyle belief system. Somebody just spitting, spitting. You start looking at their uh, 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 statement, doctrine of belief, statement of belief. Start looking at the articles of incorporation. They go against the covenant. A lot of them articles of incorporation that they uh, people written years ago and been holding on to for all these thousands of years, hundreds of years. Our next drop. 1 7 Samuel chapter 18. I'm going to read 18, 19, and 20 all together and watch this. It came to pass when he had made an end of speaking unto Shaul that the soul of Yohanan was knit with the soul of Dovi, and Yohanan loved him as his own soul. Shaul took him that day and would, would let him go no more home to his Abba's house. Then Yohanan and David made a covenant because he loved him as his own soul. And Yohanan stripped himself of the robe that was upon him and gave it to David and his garments, even to his sword, and to his bow, and to his girdle. And David went out with Zoeba Shaul sent him, and he behaved himself wisely. And Shaul set him over the men of war, and he was accepted in the sight of all the people, and also in the sight of Shaul's ebeds. And it came to pass as they came, when David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistine, that the women came out of all cities of Israel singing and dancing to meet King Shaul with tabrets, with simcha, and with instruments of music. The women answered one another as they played and said, Shaul has slain his thousands and David his ten thousands. 
And Shaul was very wroth, and the saying displeased them. <coughs> and he said, they have ascribed unto Davi ten thousands, and to me they have ascribed but thousands, and what can he have more but the kingdom? And Shaul eyed Davi from that day and forward. And it came to pass on the morrow that the evil Ruach from Elohim came upon Shaul, and he prophesied in the midst of the house, and Davi played with his hands at other times, and there was a javelin in Shaul's hands. And Shaul cast the javelin, for he said, I will smite Davi even to the mall with it. And Davi avoided out of his presence twice. And Shaul was afraid of Davi because Yah was with him and was departed from Shaul. Therefore Shaul removed him from him and made him his captain over a thousand. And he went out and came in before the people. And Davi behaved himself wisely in all his ways, and Yah was with him. Wherefore, when Shaul saw that he behaved himself very wisely, he was afraid of him. But all Israel and Yehuda loved Davi, because he went out and came in before them. And Shaul said to Davi, Behold, my elder daughter Mirah, her will I give thee to Isha, only be thou valiant for me, and fight Yah's battles for Shaul said, Let not my hand be upon him, but let the hand of the Philistines be upon him. And Davi said unto Shaul, Who am I? What is my life or my Abba's family in Israel, that I should be son in law to the king? But it came to pass at that time when Mirab, Shaul's daughter, should have been given to Davi, that she was given unto Adriel the Meholophite to Isha. And Mishal, Shaul's daughter, loved Davi, and they told Shaul and the thing pleased them. And Shaul said, I will give him her, that she may be a snare to him, and that the hand, <laughs> and that the hand of the Philistines may be against them. Wherefore Shaul said to Davi, you shall this day be my son-in-law and the one of the twain. And Shaul commanded his Ebed, saying, Commune with Davi secretly and say, Behold, the king have delight in thee and all his Ebeds love thee. Now therefore be the king's son-in-law. And Shaul's Ebed spake those words in the ears of Davi. And Davi said, Seemeth to you a light thing to be a king's son-in-law, seeing that I am a poor man and likely esteemed. And the Ebeds of Shaul told him, saying, on this manner spake Davi. And Shaul said, Thus shall ye say to Davi, The king desires not any dowry, but a hundred foreskins of the Philistines to be avenged of the king's enemies. But Shaul thought to make Davi fall by the hand of the Philistines. And when his ebeds told Davi these words, it pleased Davi well to be the king's son-in-law, and the days were not expired. Wherefore Davi arose, went he and his men, and slew of the Philistines two hundred men. And Davi brought their foreskins, and they gave them in full tale to the king, that he might be the king's son-in-law. And Shaul gave him Michal, his daughter, to Egypt. And Shaul saw and knew that Yah was with Davi, and that Michal, Shaul's daughter, loved him. And Shaul was yet the more afraid of Davi, and Shaul became Davi's enemy continually. Then the princes of the Philistines went forth, and it came to pass after they went forth that Davi behaved himself more wisely than all the Ebeds of Shaul, so that his name was much set by. Hallelujah. How much by? Uh, 19. And Shaul spake to Johanne and his son and to all his Ebeds that they should kill Davi. And Johanne, Shaul's son, delighted much in Davi, and Johanne told Davi, saying, Shaul, my Abba, seek to kill thee. Now therefore I pray thee, take heed to thyself until the morning, and abide in a secret place, and hide thyself. And I will go out and stand beside my Abba in the field, 
where thou art, and I will commune with my Abba of thee, and what I see, that I will tell thee. And Yohanan spake good of Davi unto Shaul his Abba, and said unto him, Let not the king sin against his Ebed, against Davi, because he have not sinned against thee, and because his works have been good to thee were very good. For he did put his life in his hand and slew the Philistine, and Yah wrought a great salvation for all Israel. You saw it and did rejoice. Wherefore then will you sin against innocent blood to slay Davi with father cause? And Shaul hearkened unto the voice of Yohanan, and Shaul swear, as Yah live, he shall not be slain. And Yohanan called Davi, and Yohanan showed him all those things, and Yohanan brought Davi to Shaul, and he was in his presence as in times past. And there was war again, and Davi went out and fought with the Philistines and slew with them a great slaughter, and they fled from him. And the evil Ruach from Yah was upon Shaul as he sat in his house with his javelin in his hand, and Davi played with his hand. And Shaul sought to smite Davi even to the war with the javelin, but he slipped away out of Shaul's presence and he smote the javelin into the wall, and Davi fled and escaped that night. Shaul also sent messengers unto Davi's house to watch him and to slay him in the morning. And Mishal Davi's Isha told him, saying, If you save not thy life tonight, Tomorrow you shall be slain. So Mishal let Davi down through a window and he went and fled and escaped. And Mishal took an image and laid it in a bed and put a pillow of goat's hair for his bolster and covered it with a cloth. And when Shaul sent messengers to Davi, she said he is sick. Shaul sent the messengers again to see Davi saying, Bring him up to me in the bed that I may slay him. And when the messengers were coming, behold, there was an image in the bed with a pillow of goat's hair for his bolster. And Shaul said unto Mishal, Why has you deceived me so and sent away my enemy that he has escaped? And Mishal answered Shaul, He said unto me, Let me go, why should I kill thee? So Davi fled and escaped and came to Samuel to Ramah and told him all that Shaul had done to him. And he and Samuel went and dwelt in Naoth. And it was told Shaul, saying, Behold, Davi is at Naoth in Ramah. And Shaul sent messengers to take Davi. And when they saw the company of the Navis prophesying, and Shaul stand, Samuel standing as appointed over them, the Ruach of Elohim was upon the messengers of Shaul, and they also prophesied. And when it was told Shaul, he sent other messengers, and they prophesied likewise. And Shaul sent messengers again the third time, and they prophesied also. When Then when he also to Ramah and came to a great well that is in Sichu, and he asked and said, Where are Samuel and David? And one said, Behold, they be at Naoth and Ramah. And he went there to Naoth and Ramah, and the Ruach of Elohim was upon him also. And he went on and prophesied until he came to Naoth and Ramah. And he stripped off his clothes also and prophesied before Samuel in like manner and laid down naked all that day and all that night. Wherefore they say is Shaul also among the Navis. Hallelujah. Chapter 20. And Davi fled from Naoth and Ramah and came and said before Yohanan, What have I done? What is my iniquity and what is my sin before thy Abba that he seeks my life? And he said unto him, Elohim forbid, you shall not die. Behold, my Abba will do nothing either great or small but that he will show it me, and why should my Abba hide this thing from me? It is not so. And Davi swear moreover and said, Thy Abba certainly know that I have found grace in thy eyes. And he says, Let not Johanna know this, lest he be grieved, but truly as Yah live, 
And as thy soul live, there is but a step between me and death. Then said Yohanan unto Darby, Whatsoever thy soul desire, I will even do it for thee. And Darby said unto Yohanan, Behold, tomorrow is the new moon, and I should not fail to sit with the king at me. But let me go that I may hide myself into the field until the third day at even. <coughs> If thy Abed all miss me, then say, Darby earnestly asked leave of me that he might run to Bethlehem, his city, for there is a yearly sacrifice there for all the family. If he say thus, it is well, thy Abed shall have shalom, but if he be very wroth, then be sure that evil is determined by him. Therefore, you shall deal kindly with thy Abed, for you have brought thy Ebed into a covenant of Yah with thee, notwithstanding if there be in me in the iniquity, slay me thyself, for why should you bring me to thy Abba? And Johannes said, Far be it from thee, for if I knew certainly that evil were determined by my Abba to come upon thee, then would not I tell it thee? Then said Darby to Johanna, who shall tell me? Or what if thy Abba answer thee roughly? And Johanna said unto Darby, Come and let us go out into the field. And they went out both of them into the field. And Johanna said unto Darby, O Yah Ella Israel, when I have sounded my Abba about tomorrow, any time, or the third day, and behold, if there be good toward Darby, and I then send not unto thee, and show it thee, y'all do so and much more to your Uhane, but if it please my Abba to do the evil, then I will show it thee, and send thee away that you may go in shalom, and that Yah be with thee as he have been with my Abba. You shall not only while yet I live show me the kindness of Yah, that I die not, but also you shall not cut off thy kindness from my house forever. No, not when Yah have cut off the enemies of Darby, everyone from the face of the earth. So Yohanan made a covenant with the house of Darby, saying, Let Yah even require it at the hand of Darby's enemies. And Yohanan caused Darby to swear again because he loved them, for he loved them as he loved his own soul. Then Johannes said to Darby, Tomorrow's the new moon, and you shall be missed, because thy seat will be empty. And when you have stayed three days, then you shall go down quickly and come to the place where you did hide thyself when the business was in hand, and shall remain by the stone easel. And I will shoot three arrows on the side thereof, as though I shot at a mark. And behold, I will send a lad saying, go find out the arrows. If I expressly say unto the lad, behold, the arrows are on this side of thee, take them, then come thou, for there is shalom to thee and no hurt as y'all live. But if I say thus unto the young man, behold, the arrows are beyond thee, go thy way, for y'all have sent thee away. And as touching the matter, which you and I have spoken of, behold, Yah be between thee and me forever. So Darvi hid himself in the field, and when the new moon was come, the king sat him down to eat meat. And the king sat upon his seat as at other times, even upon a seat by the wall, and Yohanan arose, and Abner sat by Shaul's side, and Darvi's place was empty. Nevertheless, Shaul spake not anything that day, for he thought something had befallen him. He is not clean. Surely he is not clean. And it came to pass on the morrow, which was the second day of the new moon, that David's place was empty. And Shaul said unto Johanna his son, Wherefore cometh not the son of Jesse to meet neither yesterday nor today? And Johanna answered Shaul, Darvi earnestly asked leave of me to go to Bethlehem, and he said, Let me go, I pray thee, for our family have a sacrifice in the city, 
and my eye he have commanded me to be there. And now if I have found grace in thy eyes, let me get away. I pray thee and see my brethren. Therefore he come not unto the king's table. Then Shaul's anger was kindled against Johanne, and he said unto him, You son of the perverse, rebellious woman, do not I know that you have chosen the son of Jesse to thy own confusion and unto the confusion of thy armor's nakedness? For as long as the son of Jesse live upon the ground, you shall not be established nor your kingdom. Wherefore now send and fetch him unto me, for he shall surely die. And Johanna answered Shaul his Abba and said unto him, Wherefore shall he be slain? What shall have he done? And Shaul cast the javelin at him to smite him, whereby Johanna knew that it was determined of his Abba to slay David. So Johanna arose from the table in fierce anger and did eat no meat the second day of the new moon, for he was grieved for Darvi because his Abba had done him shame. And it came to pass in the morning that Johanna went out in the field at the time appointed with Darvi and a little lad with him. And he said unto his lad, Run, find out now the arrows which I shoot. And as the lad ran, he shot an arrow beyond him. And when the lad was come to the place of the arrow which Johanna had shot, Johanna cried after the lad and said, Is not the arrow beyond thee? And Johanna cried after the lad, Make speed, haste, stay not. And Johanna's lad gathered up the arrows and came to his master. But the lad knew not anything, only Johanna and Darvi knew the matter. And Johanna gave his artillery into his lad and said unto him, Go carry them to the city. And as soon as the lad was gone, Darvi arose out of a place toward the south and fell on his face to the ground, bowed himself three times, and they kissed one another and wept one with another until Darvi exceeded. And Johanna said to Darvi, Go in shalom, for as much as we have both sworn of us in the name of Yah, saying, Yah be between me and thee, and be between my seed and thy seed forever. And he arose and departed. And Johanna went into the city. Hallelujah. Look at this. This man was so jealous, he was trying to still kill his son. Look, y'all, I'm going to tell you something. Stay away from them desperate parents. Some of you all are, are, are trying to do what's right, but use wisdom. Stay away from them desperate parents. A lot of them parents are desperate, all right? Because they've been hemmed up, caught up in lies and, and, and man-made garbage all their lives. Now uh, they're getting older, seeing the end of their days. And now, you know, they're trying to be peaceable, peaceable and all of that. Now, nah. uh, let's get to our search words. Chapter 18, verse, uh, let's see. Let's look at verse 8. Six says, uh, the women came out of all cities of Israel singing and dancing to meet King Shaul with tabrets, joy, and with instruments of music. And the women answered one another as they played and said, Shaul have slain his thousands and Darby his ten thousands. And Shaul was very wroth in the saying displeased them. And he said, they have ascribed unto Darby ten thousands. And to me, they have ascribed but thousands, and what can he have more but the kingdom? The start of jealousy, all right? But notice here in verse 5, it says, uh, uh, Davi uh, uh, behaved himself wisely. <coughs> you got to use wisdom, young warriors. You will excel a whole lot of people, all right? You will go further, all right? But you got to use wisdom, all right? Because some of them been been wicked for years. Some of them uh, that you thought were men of Elohim were actually sons of Eli, sons of Bala, all right? Use wisdom. Verse 9, Shaul I Davi from that day forward, verse 10. 
And it came to pass on the morrow that the evil rock from Elohim came upon Shaul. And he prophesied in the midst of the house, and Darby played with his hand as at other times, and there was a javelin in Shaul's hand. Listen to where the evil ruach, the evil spirit came from. It came from Elohim. All right? Some of you all really need to know your, the mighty one that you serve. Some of you all don't know that, you know, the mighty one that you serve put lies in people's mouths. Yeah. All right? He'll put evil uh, ministers uh, uh, in places. Here's an evil Ruach right here upon Shaul. Uh, 11 says, Shaul cast a javelin, for he said, I will smite Darvim into the wall with it. And Darvim avoided out of his presence twice. People, you got people that hate you. 14 and 15 says, again, Darvim behaved himself wisely. All right? Uh, let's see. 21, Shaul said, I will give him her that she may be a snare to him and that the hand of the Philistines may be against them. Wherefore, Shaul said to Darby, you shall this day be my son-in-law and one of the twain. Listen, some of you all are dealing with people that will literally put people in your life to be a snare to your soul, all right? And this is what happened here. That's bad whenever you 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 using your children as snares and gins. Find out what the gin is. Alright? It's found in Psalms. Uh let's see. 25. Shaul said, Thus shall ye say to Davi, the king desires not any dowry, but a hundred four skins of the Philistines to be avenged of the King's enemies, but Shaul thought to make Darby fall by the hand of the Philistines. That same thing with uh, Yasef and his brothers, what his brothers meant for evil, the Most High got the glory out of. Yeah, that's what the Most High did with Darby in verse 25. And the word enemies there was entry number 341. Scriptural Hebrew word Oyeb, uh, part of hating adversary foe. It goes on to say, uh, let's see, our next word is in verse uh, 29. Shaul was yet the more afraid of Davi, and Shaul became Davi's enemy continually. How can you trust somebody you supposed to be serving that's, supposed, that's constantly trying to whack you, trying to kill you, all right? That's how wicked and jealous if you read the whole 1 Samuel, you would have saw when the king kingdom was ripped out of Shaul's hands and given to Davi, a man after the Most High's own heart. But we as Israel, this problem really didn't start in 1 Samuel when Israel wanted a king. This problem started back in Exodus 20. After they heard, you shall not do this, you shall not do that. Um, Exodus 20 verse, uh, let me get it for you. Let me show you what it, what it, what it said. Uh, let's see. Uh, Exodus. Oh, here it is. Verse 18, and all the people saw the thunders, the lightnings, the noise of the trumpet, and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. And they said unto Moshe, speak you with us and we will shema. But let not Elohim speak with us lest we die. This is where our problems came in at. The Most High wanted a direct relationship with each and every one of us. But then, you know, people couldn't handle that. You know, and that's where the problem came in at. Chapter 19, uh, this was interesting here. Oh, go back to uh, 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 chapter 18, verse 30. Then the princes of the Philistines went forth. It came to pass after they went forth that David behaved himself more wisely than all the Ebeds of Shaul, so that his name was much set by. 
Notice in chapter 18 that it kept saying he behaved himself wisely. All right. Chapter 19, uh, verse 1. Shaul spake to Yohanan his son and to all his ebeds that they should kill David. But listen to the wisdom of the son in verse 2. Yohanan, Shaul's son, delighted much in David, and Yohanan told David, saying, Shaul, my father, seek to kill thee. Now therefore I pray thee, take heed to thyself until the morning. And embody into a, in a secret place and hide thyself. Listen, some of you parents need to listen to the wisdom of your fully grown anointed child. Especially the ones that ain't speaking that garbage that most of you all have learned. <coughs> I got to call it garbage. A dog's a dog, a cat's a cat. Uh... 1 Samuel 19, verse 9. The evil ruach from Yah was upon Shaul as he sat in his house with his javelin in his hand, and David played with his hand. David was playing an instrument and singing undoubtedly. All right? Notice again, the evil ruach from the Most High. Some of you parents got evil spirits on Yah. I don't even know if they from the Most High. Because a lot of you all deal with your, 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 your children so wickedly. You got these over here that you coddle and, and do all of this to. And then you got this one over here, the black sheep. Listen, people, just stay the course with the Most High. Because the Most High will begin to remove many of them out of your lives. Uh, let's see. Chapter 19, verse 17. Shaul said unto me, Shaul, why hast thou deceived me so and sent me away my enemy that he is escaped? And me, Shaul answered, Shaul, he said unto me, let me go, why should I kill thee? This is something. The very daughter that he put on David that would be a snare into his, he thought was going to be a snare into his soul, saved his life. And the word here, enemy, was entry number 341, uh, scriptural Hebrew word Oyeb, and it means part of hating adversary foe. Very important, people. Very important. Mm, mm, mm. Please, people, stay prayed up. Keep yourself out of the way of shenanigans. It's very important that you do so. Chapter 20, uh, let's see, verse 15. But also you shall not cut off thy kindness from my house forever. No, not when Yah have cut off the enemies of Darvi, every one from the face of the earth. This was the pact that Yohanan and Darvi made. All right, uh, verse 15, the word enemies, entry number 341, scriptural Hebrew word Oyeb. Part of hating adversary foe. Verse 16. So Yohanan made a covenant with the house of David, saying, Let Yah even require it at the hand of David's enemies. This word enemies, entry number 341. Scriptural Hebrew word Oyeb means part of hating adversary foe. I find this story real interesting because. You know, all, all Shaul had to do was repent. But he want to burn offerings and want to do all kinds of stuff that he ain't supposed to do when he loses the kingdom. Listen to 30. Shaul's anger was kindled against Johanan and he said unto him, Thou son of the perverse, rebellious woman. Now all of a sudden, uh, 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 Yohanan mother's perverse and rebellious all because they ain't gonna let you do evil to an innocent man. Shaul's anger was kindled against Yohanan and he said unto him, you son of the perverse and rebellious woman, do not I know that you have chosen the son of Yesi to thy own confusion and unto the confusion of thy Amma's nakedness? 
For as long as the son of Yesi lives upon the ground, you shall not be established nor thy kingdom. Listen, some of us don't even care nothing about no, no shenanigans about who going to run the family and who going to do this and who going to do that. We just trying to live an obedient life to the most high. Wherefore now send and fetch him unto me, for he shall surely die. And they still won't live hearken unto that man. See, Yohanan got a got a whole level of wisdom on him. When he said he troubled his father, troubled the land with what he was saying about that curse. That was a real thing. People, stay encouraged. Stay encouraged, people, because you got many Shaul's. That's ever all I ever had before me in leadership, a bunch of Shaul's, a bunch of examples of what not to do. Bunch of examples of what not to do. Some of y'all wonder why you didn't make it in the mosque or didn't make it in churchianity or didn't make it in them so-called camps and kahals. Them places was wicked. I'm a Davi. Although my first name is Cyrus, I'm a Davi. You got a whole lot of examples, young warriors, of what not to do. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we kneel before your throne of mercy and grace, we ask that you would sanctify us in thy word, for thy word is true. Many of us got parents, Father, that's trying to kill us every twist and turn, try to stomp us down, have us dragged away in the prisons and all kinds of stuff, Father. We ask that you would keep your e-beds this day. We even ask, Father, that you would be with your warriors, Father. Allow this word to go into them to receive uh, 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 light and water. Allow it to be planted in the good soil of their heart so it can bring forth fruit unto thy glory. We even ask, Father, that you will barack those who joined us and those who will join us. Continue to get the glory, the praise, and the honor out of us. Be our peace and our strength. We ask that you will open doors no man can close and close doors no man can open. We ask, Father, that you will have thine own way in our lives. We ask this in Yeshua HaMashiach name we pray. Hallelujah. Get a jump start on 2 Samuel. All right, read the whole thing. Get a jump start because I still got uh, more drops here in 1 Samuel. So get a get a jump start. All right? Shalom everyone.